excited. So excited. Come on. Listen, there's life in the word, healing in the word. Everything you and I need is found in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mickey, you excited today? I am so excited about the word. Today. I know somebody's faith is about to go to, to another a level another today. Level. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, but before we get started, can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all give a hand for our first time worshipers? Welcome. Yes. Welcome. 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 We are so glad to have you with us today. We love God, we love you, and we love to see you come back and worship with us all over again. Amen. Amen. Can y'all do me one more favor? Can y'all give a hand to our, to our online and television campus? Come on, come on. Come on, wherever you're watching from in the world, wherever you're watching from, it's not by accident that you found us. The Bible declares that the steps of good men and women are ordered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so um, God has a word for you. Don't turn away. You're about to go to another level. Amen. 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 Well, if you have your Bible, your smartphone, your iPad, however you get the word, come on, hold them up, hold them up. We're going to make a confession, and we're going to jump right in the word. Say this with me. This is my sword. This is my sword. God's holy word. God's holy word. This is my weapon. This is my weapon. Against the enemy of my soul. Against the enemy of my soul. I'm everything. I'm everything. That it says I am. That it says I am. I can do everything. I can do everything. That it says I can do. That it says I can this do. This is my GPS. This is my GPS. To eternal life. To eternal life. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. And if you don't want to be lost, be sure to use your GPS. Amen. Amen. If you have that Bible, go ahead and locate Philippians, the fourth chapter. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. And while you're finding that, we're going to read um, our main scriptures for the series that we've been in. This is week five. This is week five. Anybody been blessed so far by this series? I don't know about you. Um, God has taken our lives to another level by mm -hmm. learning his principles. Amen. 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 Um, so, so here we are. John 10 and 10 is our, um, John 10, 10, very familiar scripture. And then Psalm 23. You ready? We're going to read it out of the Amplified Bible. You ready, Pastor Mika? Ready. Come on, let's jump in. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Okay, so the Bible declares really quickly, if it's stealing, killing, or destroying, it must be the thief and not God. Mm -hmm. No, let me say that again. If it's stealing, killing, or destroying, can't be God. Amen. Okay, watch this. I came. That they may have and enjoy life. Everybody say, have and enjoy life. Have and enjoy life. What does that mean, Pastor Mika? And have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Oh, that's good. Come on, let's read something else. Psalm 23, very familiar passage of scripture. Let's just read one through five. Let's read out of the Amplified. Out of the Amplified. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me. I shall not want. Somebody say, I shall not want. I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul, life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Okay, stop right there, Pastor Mika. How many want to be led down the paths of righteousness? Okay, no, literally that, was, that means how many want to be led on how to live godly and live God's way and go where he's trying to take you? Come on, wave your hand if you want to be led down the path of righteousness. Okay, but there's a qualifier there. It's only on the heels of a refreshed and a restored soul. So, so before he leads you down the path of righteousness, he must first restore your soul. And what is our soul, our mind, our will, our intellect, our emotions, and our imagination? Many of us are trying to live down and walk down the road of righteousness and our soul hasn't stretched to the point where we realize that it's not in our righteousness that we do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why Soul Care September is so, so important. important. Talk about it, Pastor. Me. It's so important that we set aside that time to allow him the opportunity and our intentionality for him to renew our soul. Because life is always trying to eat away, erode, or damage our mind, our will, our intellect, our emotions, and our imaginations. So we set aside this time so we can focus on God and allow him the opportunity to restore and rebuild and repair our souls. Oh, that's good, Pastor Me. Let's, um, let's go to verse 4. Verse four. Okay. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort and console me. Verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Come on, somebody say overflow. Overflow. You know, this is the fifth week we've been in this series entitled Overflow. Mm -hmm. And so we've been teaching for the past five weeks how it is God's plan to bless you and take you into places from not enough through just enough, into more than enough, into another land called too much, 
which is overflow. Somebody say overflow. Overflow. Now, um, now don't get it twisted. We've been teaching um, the Lord raised us up to write a book um, called Faith for Finances. And if you were here last week, you know the workbook came out on last week. The workbook came out on last week. And, um, and it's a 25-day it's a workbook. And so over 25 days, you'll, um, you'll do a more in-depth study and a deep dive. And I'm going to give you some prayer agendas and give you some things to work on. Um, who got it? Did anybody get it last week? Did anybody get it? Okay, um, if you didn't get an opportunity, grab yours today. But I'm telling you, everything that we're teaching um, during this series, most of it is coming out of here. And yeah. so make sure you get a copy. Amen. I want to add to that. Make sure you work the workbook if you buy it. Like, work the workbook. Don't just, like, glance at it or say, I bought it so I can just have it on the shelf. No, I mean, act right in it. Take notes. Memorize the scriptures. I encourage you to do it all in one color ink and then go back a year or two from now or a few months from now and do it all over again in another color. Work the workbook and watch God work funny, in your finances. Funny. We were getting ready to come up here, and uh, my Bible is kind of raggedy. Yeah. And um, my daughter said, my daughter says, uh, Daddy, your Bible is falling apart. And, and the truth of the matter is most people who have a Bible that's falling apart have a life that's not. Amen. No, 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 I, no, I want you to know something. You got to work the workbook. Yeah. You have to follow the GPS. Amen. And so when Pastor Mika says work the workbook, just tell your neighbor, work the workbook. Work the workbook. Because faith comes by. Hearing. And hearing by. The word of God. So you can only have faith for that which you have been taught properly, repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. You can only have faith for that which you have been taught properly, repeatedly. Because mm -hmm. faith doesn't just come by hearing. It comes by hearing and hearing. And hearing. Because contrary to popular belief, truth is not a persuader. Repetition is. Right. Two plus two is? Four. You didn't just add it up. You knew it because you heard it repeated. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's find out what we're going to talk about today. But before we start, before we start, y'all ready? We're going to make our confession. You ready? No, you didn't sound like you're ready. <laughs> Have y'all been making your confession? Yes. Okay, let's make our confession. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I boldly declare. I boldly declare. That Jesus is Lord of this earth. That Jesus is Lord of this earth. The world. The world. And all of its fullness. And all of its fullness. Belong to God. Belong to God. I claim and receive. I claim and receive. Everything Jesus' is death. Everything Jesus' is death. And resurrection. And resurrection. Made available to me. Made available to me. I am living. I am living. In the overflow. In the overflow. I have a surplus of prosperity. I have a surplus of prosperity. I have more than enough. I have more than enough. I am blessed beyond measure. I am blessed beyond measure. My cup is running over. My cup is running over. I am furnished in abundance. I am furnished in abundance. I receive I receive multiple streams of income. Multiple streams of income. My storehouses. My storehouses are full. Are full. And overflowing. And overflowing. The Lord is helping me. The Lord is helping me. To guard the door of my mouth. To guard the door of my mouth. And I will not speak against. And I will not speak against. His favor. His favor. At work in my life. At work in my life. I am increasing. I am increasing. More and more. More and more. The floodgates of heaven. The floodgates of heaven. Are open. Are open and the blessing and the blessing is pouring out. Is pouring out. There's not room enough. There's not room enough to contain it all. To contain it all. I am experiencing. I am experiencing the overflow. The overflow in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pull it down. Say I receive all of that. I, I receive, receive it. I receive it. I receive so, it. So let's find out how to continue to receive it on another level. Philippians the fourth chapter. Philippians the fourth chapter. Let's start at verse fifteen. You ready, Pastor Mika? Ready. Let's read out a new living. Translation. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. So Paul's talking to the Philippian church, the, in particular the Philippian church. He said, because no other church did this. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. Everybody say more than once. More than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with the Paphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Somebody say pleasing to God. Pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. If you're not too mean, just touch three people in your area and tell them my seed seals my partnership. 
No, come on. That was one. Get two. Come on, get two more. <laughs> Tell them my seed seals my partnership. Okay, so last week, yes. <laughs> last week we, 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 we began a, a, a more in-depth discussion on seeds. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we talked about how every seed is important. How many believe every seed is important? Um, we, we even talked about um, how the fact that every seed has an invisible set of instructions on it that say produce and reproduce this. Yes. So corn seeds say produce what? Corn. Okay, apple seeds say produce. Apples. Orange seeds say produce. Oranges. Friendly seeds says produce. Friends. Romance seeds says produce. Romance. Then why am I praying for money? Y'all got quiet. Let me help you. Um, today we're, um, we're going to talk about a particular seed that says produce a particular thing. Um, there's a particular seed that provides access to the storehouses of heaven. Let me say it again. There's a particular seed that unlocks the windows and the doors of heaven. Mm. Okay, y'all y'all get quiet. Don't get quiet. Let everybody say partnerships. Partnerships. Partnerships are how God accomplishes his will in the earth. Amen. Let me say that again. Partnerships are, is how God accomplishes his will in the earth. Everybody say prove it, Pastor Russ. Prove it, Pastor Russ. Y'all remember Jesus, right? Y'all know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus was a carpenter and turned a preacher, right? And he was preaching all over the place. But he wasn't by himself. He had 12 partners. Y'all got quiet, okay. Mm -hmm. um, if Jesus could do it alone, he wouldn't need partners. But he gave us a biblical example of how he accomplishes his will in the earth. He does it through partnership. Mm -hmm. Somebody say partnership. Partnership. So we're going to give you a definition. We're going to give you a definition of faith partnership. What is a faith partnership, Pastor Mika? Faith partnership. A mutually beneficial relationship where two or more people agree to play their part in accomplishing the will of God in the earth together by faith. Somebody say together by faith. Together by faith. Can you read that one more time? Okay. What is a faith partnership? Faith partnership is a mutually beneficial relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, notice it says mutually beneficial, not equally beneficial. Okay, okay? so every relationship should be mutually beneficial. Mutually beneficial. Talk about it. Talk about it. Mutually beneficial means that we're both getting something out of the deal. It may not be equitable. It may not be even. There, it may be that I get the opportunity to pour into you while you get the opportunity to receive, or it may where I get the opportunity to receive from you while you get the opportunity to invest in me. So in some relationships, I pour. Mm -hmm. In other relationships, I drink. But in both scenarios, it's mutually beneficial. Right. Come on, somebody say partnership. Partnership. So in the very familiar passage of scripture that we just read, you know, everybody loves to quote the, uh, Philippians 4.19, but, uh, but he's talking to the Philippian church. And he was talking to them and he was commending them. Um, he, Paul was commending the Philippian church on how they had partnered with him to help him accomplish God's will in taking the gospel to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all with me? And so, so he said, you consistently and repeatedly partnered with me. And so that granted you access to something. He says in King James, he says, and my God shall supply. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay, notice because it doesn't, it doesn't say, and my God shall supply your money. Because some people don't need money. Right. He says, how many of your needs? Oh. Some of, some, does all include every single one of? Because some people need healing in, your, in their body. Is that included in all? Mm -hmm. Some pe people need healing in their relationship. Is that included in all? Mm -hmm. Some people need to learn how to communicate better with their family and their children. Is that included in all? Yeah. Some people just need an open door of favor. Is that included in all? Yeah. Paul says because you had repeatedly and consistently sown the same God that's taking care of me yeah. is going to take care of you. Mm. Their seed literally put them in partnership with Paul, with God through Paul. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. And so um, let me give, let me, let's get this straight. You cannot buy anything from God. No, let me say that again. You cannot pay God to bless you. You cannot pay God to right. give you a miracle. You cannot buy some, some miracle oil and rub it on yourself and you be healed from God. God is not a magician. He is almighty God, and he gives you a system of operation, his way of living and being right. Is that okay? That's good. And so before we do this, he's not a cosmic bellhop. He do, he do, you don't say, okay, God, I'm going to give you $50 and you do this, God. God don't work like that. Come on, somebody say amen. Right. However, we can authorize him to get involved in our stuff when we get involved in his stuff. Amen. 
Yeah, it's not, um, it's not um, buying a miracle or trying to manipulate, manipulate a situation. If you tell me if you do this, I will do this, and I do what you ask, then that obligates you to do your other side of the coin, right? He says, he who desires friends must first show himself friendly. So if I show myself friendly and I have friends, I haven't manipulated anyone. I haven't bartered a deal. I just followed the instructions that were laid out in God's word for me and I received that harvest. He says, if you obey and serve him, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. If I obey and serve him and I don't spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure, then he's a bad partner. Oh, y'all right. got quiet, y'all got quiet. Okay. Somebody say, my seed. My seed. Seals my partnership. Seals my partnership. When, I, when we were studying and getting ready for this lesson, the Lord, the Lord just, he spoke this to me as I was meditating. He said, Russ, both of us have to have skin in the game. Uh -huh. I, I said, what'd you say, God? He said, he said, you and I both have to have a part in this covenant. My covenant mm -hmm. is to bless you. He says, I do the performing, you do the obeying. Your job has mm. never been performance. God's job is always performance. Your job is faith and obedience. Amen. Is that okay? That's so good. So come on, let's talk about how this partnership see, blesses us and is a blessing to others. Luke 5, let's start at verse 4. Jesus is getting ready to preach here. He's preaching and he's allowed, um, Simon has allowed him to use his boat. Come on, let's see mm -hmm. what he says. He's wrapping it up. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. Somebody say, but if you say so. But if you say so. Come on, Pastor Mika, go. Come on, give it to him. Verse 6. And this time. Woo. Woo. And this time. Somebody say, and this time. This time. Come on. I shared it this morning. I'm going to go ahead and share it again. There's something different about this time. Yeah. It's something different. And I don't want you to miss this time because of what happened last time. This is not that. So just think about the fact that Jesus was dealing with a professional fisherman who had spent all night fishing. This is in the same day. For some of you in the room, this was years ago that was your last time. That is not this time. But in the same 24 hours, he said, and this time, their nets were so full of fish they began to tear. And watch this. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Wait, wait, a shout for what, class? Partners. Somebody say partners. Partners. Number one, put this in your notes. My partnership seed is a blessing to everyone connected to me. Let me say it again. My partnership seed is a blessing to everyone connected to me. Okay, Peter partners with Jesus. Y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me tell you how he does it. Y'all know Jesus was a traveling preacher and he was preaching and a lot of people showed up, a whole mm -hmm. lot of people, and there, were no, there was no electricity and there were no microphones for amplification. Y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all know me and Pastor Mika are speaking in mics. That's why y'all hear us so clear. But they didn't have that, so they had to be innovative in Jesus' day. So Peter's on the shore and Jesus says, hey, let me sit in your boat and push away from the shore and I'll use the water to amplify my voice to the multitude. So Peter partners with Jesus and how many of y'all know God will not owe you? That's right. Come on. Come on. So you cannot do something for God and, and he'll not outdo you. what you did for him. Right. No, let me help you. I tried to outgive God. It hasn't worked yet. <laughs> Tell your no. neighbor it won't work. It won't work. And so, so, so he lets Jesus use his boat. And Jesus says, okay, Peter, um, now take your nets, and I want you to go out in the deep, and I want you to fish again. And Peter says, wait a minute. By now, it's daytime. We, uh, we fished all night. Obviously, Peter needed fish, right? Yeah. Because if you, if, you if you don't need fish, you're not going to fish all night. That's why Pastor Russ don't fish. Because <laughs> if I go fishing, and 30 minutes, I ain't caught nothing. Yeah, we're done. I might throw that fishing pole in the lake. <laughs> he just the lake. I want to go catching. I don't want to go fishing. <laughs> and so Peter says, Peter said, we toiled and we fished all night and we caught nothing. And he says, but nevertheless, nevertheless. because you told me to, I'm going to cast my net out again. And mm. he put the net out. Well, watch, ooh, watch this, watch this, watch this. Mm. His seed qualified him for the harvest of fish but his obedience caused the fish to jump in the net. Let me say that again. When you sow a seed, you qualify for a harvest. Yeah. But he won't make you go. And reap it in. 
The harvest is plenty, it's the laborers are few. So, so, his, so Peter says, nevertheless, I'll do what you said. And he threw the net out and the Bible, I like King James says, the net began to break. Oh, go. How many things are you forfeiting because you won't obey? How much harvest are you leaving to rot on the vine because you won't obey the instruction? You sown the seed. It was a precious seed. And he has made a bountiful harvest for you. And then he tells you, go apply for the job. Go start the business. Go make the introduction. But because the enemy has talked you into feeling inadequate, less than, to has got you stalled out, your harvest is rotting on the vine because you will not obey the instruction so you can receive the full harvest. Oh, that's good, Pastor Mika. So Peter obeys and is so good that he has to call for partners. partners. So, watch, so he calls for partners and is so good that not only does Peter's boat begin to sink from yeah. how large the harvest is, his partner's boat begin to sink. Okay, I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand what God is saying. He says, as you partner with me, I'm going to make it so good that I bless the folk that's just associated with you. Yes. I don't think you understand what happens after. He retires Peter on one catch. That's the last day Peter fishes for fish. Mm. Okay. So, so for at least, he retired Peter enough for at least for the next three years. My God. Can you imagine if God sent so much business to your business? No, no, no. All because you partner with him. You have so much business that you have to outsource some of your business. Yes. Because you have partnered with Jesus on a level that makes a divine impact. But that, okay, you ought to tell your neighbor, be glad you're sitting on my road. <laughs> tell him why. I say, because I'm a partner. Because, because I'm a partner. I'm a partner. That my partnership seat is a blessing to all those yes. associated. Could you be toiling so much and working so hard and catching nothing because you failed to partner? Mm, this could, is not no, that. Could you, could you be struggling because you failed to partner? And that was part of the enemy's desire to get you so upset and um, frustrated and offended with the last partners that when God brought you these partners, you won't understand, you would not understand that this is not that. And I get it. They, they didn't hold up their end of the deal. They left you stuck. They put you in a bad position. But this, what God is doing now, this time is not that time. So don't allow the enemy to rob you in this season of what God has for you and those God has for you, the partners that he has for you by being focused on the last. You're punishing the next partner because of the ex-partner. But see, really, the problem is you chose the ex-partner. God's choosing the next partner. Yes. Second Kings 4, 2 Kings 4. Let's start at verse 8. Watch this, watch this, watch this. One day, Elisha went to the town of Shunem. A wealthy woman lived there, and she urged him to come to her home for a meal. Watch this. After that, whenever he passed that way, he would stop there for something to eat. Wait, so she said, hey, preacher, come have a meal at my house. It must have been a, a good meal, and she must have felt honored because every time he went by, he said, let's go by that lady's house. Mm -hmm. now, now, watch, now watch this. Watch, watch Verse 9. She said to her husband, I am sure this man who stops in from time to time is a holy man of God. Let's build a small room for him on the roof and furnish it with a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. Then he will have a place to stay whenever he comes back. Wait, 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 wait. The lady was so honorable to the man of God that she tells her husband, the rich lady says to her husband, hey, um, let's do a construction project with the only goal of being a blessing to the man of God. She said, let's build a suite on our house. Mm. Not one, just a bedroom because it had a table, a lamp, and a chair, and a bed, and a desk. Well, come on, y'all know y'all go to the, if you had the if you had the motel eight. Yeah. It was different <laughs> than the rich Carlton. To say. So obviously they weren't okay, y'all understand. We leave the light on. Okay. <laughs> let's drop so down to let's verse. Let's drop down to verse 14. Watch this, watch this. Later Elisha asked Jehazi, what can we do for her? Jehazi replied, She doesn't have a son. And her husband is an old man. So he says, what can we do for her? We can't give her some money because she already has money. Or we can't speak up for her because everybody knows who she is. We, we, we don't have to open the door for her because her name alone opens doors. But what can we do for her? 
His servant says she's old. Her husband is old and she has no son. Okay, that don't sound too crazy to y'all because y'all live now, but if y'all lived in that society, um, if she did not have a son, she was obviously, we know she's wealthy, right? right. So um, in, in that day, women could not own anything. So she did it, and her husband was old, so that implied that he was going to pass before she was, more than likely. And so if he were to die, she did not own anything, and everything that they did own would pass to another man if she did not have a male son. So he says, she's old and she doesn't have, her husband's old, she doesn't have a son. Let's read the rest. Watch Verse 15, this. call her back again, Elisha told him. When the woman returned, Elisha said to her as she stood in the doorway, next year at this time, you'll be holding a son in your arms. No, my Lord, uh-uh. She cried, old man of God, don't deceive me. Don't play with me like that. Don't you get my hopes up like that. <laughs> Verse 17, but sure enough, the woman soon became pregnant, and at, the, at that time, the following year, she had a son, just as Elisha had said. Oh, number two, put this in your notes. My partnership seed is unlocking my heart's desires. Amen. Let me say it again. My partnership seed is unlocking my heart's desires. Somebody say heart's desires. Heart's desires. The Shunammite woman, who was a wealthy woman, obviously had a desire to be a blessing to God's man, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, say amen. Amen. But also, she had some desires in her heart that she had not revealed. Right. No, no, y'all got quiet. Right. Come on. No, no, say prove it, Pastor Russ. Prove it, Pastor Russ. She doesn't ask them for a son. But when he brings up son, she said, don't play with me like that. Amen. Because she obviously had already made up in her mind that she knew that that wasn't going to happen. Right. How many heart's desires have you had that you put back on the shelf Saying, I'm too old for that now. Hmm. Or, or that, that, that window has passed. Or, or, or I wish good. I had when I was. Yeah. Oh, y'all got quiet. Y'all got quiet. Hmm. And she, she never even tells them hmm. that that's what she wanted. But, but, but watch this. Sometimes the, uh, a man or woman of God can step back and see in the spirit what you need. My God. And, and part of our assignment today is to tell you, you can still have it. Yeah. I don't I don't know what, what it is. I don't know what, 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 what you thought was long gone and was long past, but the Lord wants me to tell you today it's not too late for you to have it. Yes. You can you can still be it, you can still go there, you can still do it. God says I'm still capable because I'm still God. Yes. Talk about it, Pastor Me. Go so ahead. So then that would behoove us to then go back and dust off the dreams and the visions that we once had. And I would encourage you to sit with the Holy Spirit and allow him to write on the canvas of your imagination Ooh. without limits. You said without limits? Without limits. Come on. Not without a price tag. You know, not with concern with, you know, no one in my family's ever done this or I've never been there before because of my ethnicity or because of my gender or because of my economic status or because of my past mistakes or because of my current mistakes. No, take all of the limits off and allow God to speak and show you what he has for you, what his desires are for you, mm. what you want. And then what he says, delight yourself in the Lord, in the Lord and, and he'll, he'll give, give you the, the desires, desires of, of your heart. heart. Now, I don't think that just means he'll give you what you desire. He will give you what to, to desire, desire so you can you can release your faith to have and enjoy life. So there was a desire in her heart that wasn't revealed until after she partnered. Re oh, revelation and manifestation. No. Okay, watch this. Her partnership seed brought, everybody say revelation. Revelation. And manifestation. And manifestation. Everybody trying to manifest stuff, but ain't nobody partnering. Hmm. So her partnership seed brought revelation because he says she don't have a son. He reveals something that would be a blessing to her for years to come. He preserved her posterity by giving her a son. Uh-huh. And then he brought manifestation. He brought it to pass. Whoo, that's good. Good stuff. good stuff, good stuff. Somebody shout, I'm a partner. I'm a partner. Come on, let's go. That was a rich woman. We're going to see somebody who's not so rich on 1 <laughs> Kings 17. Let's start at verse 10. Watch this. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks. And he asked her, would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, bring me a bite of bread too. Wait a minute. Okay, so if you don't know anything, let me give you some context. There was a, a, a drought. Everybody say drought. Drought. It didn't rain for three and a half years. Say drought. 
Drought. And a drought brought a famine. Say famine. Famine. So the drought brought a famine because the, no crops could grow because they could not water the crops. Mm -hmm. So water was scarce mm -hmm. and food was even more scarce. Mm -hmm. So the man of God comes to the village and he sees a lady. She's picking up some sticks. He says, hey, hey, ma'am, can you get me some water? And, and y'all know that had to be precious, right? Mm -hmm. So, but she was going to do it. And while she was on the way to do it, he says, by the way, while you get me some water, get me some cake too. Get me some bread too. I, I, I can see her say, you, you pressing it now, preacher. <laughs> but now watch what she says. Watch what she says. Verse 12. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar. Did that lady just say, I swear to God, I ain't got no bread? <laughs> She just literally said, I swear to God, I ain't got no bread. <laughs> Keep going. And a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jar. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. Everybody say, oh, watch this. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said, but make a little bread for me first. Wait a minute, you greedy preacher. He says, she says, I'm going to make a piece of cake. Me and my son, we're going to eat it and die. He said, oh, yeah, you can go ahead and do that, but make me something first. Before you die, before you go die and all that, make me something first. No, he now, goes. Now, if you stop right there, it sounds like he is non-compassionate. He's non-empathetic. As a matter of fact, he sounds greedy. Oh, it goes further. He goes, then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. I just said I just got a handful. And typically, he had to say that because typically, the mama would have made a cake for her son first, then she'd have put some to the side, and then whatever was left, she would have used to make the man of God a cake. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, don't do none of that. Make mine first. Make his first. Wow. It was very vital that she made his first. Let's find out. Watch Verse this. Verse 14, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. So you can't stop until you hear the word of the Lord first. Mm -hmm. Come on, watch there this. There will always be flour and olive oil left in the containers until Woo. the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. Wait, wait. He says, give me some, and then there will always, somebody mm -hmm. say always. Always. There will always be some in there until the Lord sends, sends rain, rain and the crops grow again. So that implies that the Lord has to send rain. He has to allow them to sow seed, let those seeds grow up, and then them have a harvest. Mm -hmm. That means he got to sustain her until all that comes to pass. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yep. And so if you know anything about it, that's not like right now. That's back then. That, that could have taken several seasons. Yeah. Come on. Verse 15. So she did as Elijah said. And she and Elijah and her family continued to Wait, eat she Elijah days. and what? Her family. I thought she was trying to feed her son. Her, herself, and her family. Her, Elijah, and her family. Her family. Whole family. Family ain't just them two. No. It's just that her family. Family. They did what? Ate many days. That's because number three, put this in your notes. My partnership seed is releasing uninterrupted supply. Yes, Lord. Somebody say uninterrupted Un supply. Uninterrupted supply. Okay, one of the greatest things about partnership is that when I have a partner, I have access to what my partner has access to. If we're in partnership and I have access to something, I can, you can have access to what I have because you have access to me. Okay, so as we were studying, as we were studying, um, um, as we were studying and we were praying, the Lord said, Russ, you know that there are often interruptions in the supply chain. You know, um, for a particular product, um, sometimes there's interruptions in the supply chain and the supply goes scarce and therefore the cost of a thing goes up. Mm -hmm. I remember, um, I remember y'all remember around the pandemic time, um, lumber and drywall went from here. Skyrocketed. So one, one sheet of three quarter inch plywood was like $14 at one point. Then that thing was like $58. And so everybody was mad, and they said, well, no, there's been an interruption in the supply chain. Mm. Okay, I think you missed it. But let me help you. Everybody's supply wasn't interrupted. Because there were certain people who had partners who had access to the supply. Mm. So in, this, in the story that we, were, we just read, um, everybody, the vast majority of people, there was an interruption in the supply chain. Mm-hmm. They had no food and they had no water. Somebody say, however. However. However, Elijah was sitting by a brook, drinking water from the brook, 
and the Lord had caused a raven, a bird who doesn't even take care of their own young, to come every day and feed him meat and bread. So he had water, meat, and, and bread. bread. So he had access to the supply, even though everybody else, their supply was interrupted. Mm. And so when he goes to the widow woman, it's not because he needs what the widow woman has. Let me help you. When God talks to you about a seed, it's not because he needs your money. But you need access to his supply. <laughs> Go, go, go. Now, I love this story because the Lord sent the soil to receive her seed. Ooh, Most often, oh, you, you go places in search of soil to sow a seed. No, she was on God's heart. He sent the soil to her. And every time she sowed into that soil, she reaped a harvest. Every time she made a cake for the man of God, her family ate. That's how she got access to the uninterrupted supply because she never stopped sewing. Every time she went, now I'm, I'm going to say this part too. Never did she have barrels and barrels of meal and barrels and barrels of oil. But every time she went back in there to make a cake for the man of God, there was enough for her to make a cake for him and her whole family to so, eat. So, so she made one for him, mm -hmm. herself, uh -huh. and her family. Yep. Then she made one for him, yep. herself, and her Then she made one for herself and her this she went back and made one for and and this she went back and made one for so every time she went back and made one for him she was able to make one for herself and her family so it was uninterrupted as long as she continued to partner by making one for him he already so she partnered with him mm -hmm. and got access to who he was in partnership with mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to miss this. Could it be that your supply chain has been interrupted because you broke your partnership? Mm. Mm. And we're not talking we're not talking about money, but that could be money too. But could it be your your supply of favor? Because mm. you failed to recognize and continue to sow favor to who has sown favor into your life. Woo. Keep going, we're almost out of time. John 6. Let's start at verse 9. This is good, and it's good. Come on. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. Watch this. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Somebody say good enough. <laughs> Keep going. Verse 10. Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. So let me ask y'all a question. Can we all be honest? If it's 5,000 men there, how many women there? Double. Come on, how many women there? So if it's, it's at least 10. <laughs> so, if, so if it's 10,000 women there, how many children there? A lot. <laughs> Just tell your neighbor, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Verse 11. Verse 11. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Come on. Afterward, he did the same with the fish. Watch this. And they all ate as much as they wanted. Somebody say as much as they wanted. As much as they wanted. Now, if you go to a fish fry, and you're going to eat as much as you want, you're not going to eat one fish and one piece of bread. But it says the little boy, all he had was his lunch. He had a couple of fish, and he had five Hawaiian rolls. Oh. <laughs> see, see, look at y'all. Y'all was like, yeah, nah, nah. Now, Jesus, Come on. <laughs> if we're going to eat as much as we want, it's going to be a few fish we are too hungry for and that. a few loaves and some mustard and some hot sauce. And some crystal hot sauce. Amen. And, and it takes a lot of fish to get full. Read the rest, Pastor Vegan. Verse 12. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. Everybody say nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. Keep yep. going. Somebody need to highlight that. He told you, go ahead and highlight that. No, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. Verse 13. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. Oh, number four, put this in your notes. My partnership seed causes the supernatural to be on display. Let me say that again. My partnership seed causes the supernatural to be on display. Let me help somebody. Hmm. The thing that separates us gathering together from any other civic organization or, or fun group is the supernatural. 
No, let me help you. Let me help you. Yeah, we come together. Yeah, we fellowship. Yeah, we have a good time. Yeah, we laugh. We cry. We, we run around and we act crazy sometimes. But the difference between this and any other party is that ain't no party. Let me help you. No, let me tell you why. Because the supernatural power of God is in operation. Even while we're teaching, your faith is coming to another level because every time the word of God is taught, there's potential for faith to come. Mm -hmm. Faith cometh by hearing. You don't get more faith. You just come into a greater revelation of the faith that you already have. Mm -hmm. And that don't happen at your fun meeting. That don't happen at the comedy show. Oh, y'all got quiet. That don't happen at the amusement park. That only happens when the, the, the people of God gather together, where two or three would gather together in my name. I'll be there. And so he says, I don't need a lot. I just need something to work with. Mm -hmm. He says, I just need somebody to sow a partnership seed so I can display my supernatural power. Because mm -hmm. if you give him something to work with, he'll give you something to see. But if you don't give him something to work with, he has nothing to work on. Everybody, Lord, I want you to bless my business. I want you to bless my business. And then you don't do no work. He says, I was going to open supernatural doors, but, but your door wasn't even open. Your business say nine to, nine to five and you get there at noon. And leave it too. Well, nobody, nobody came. Yes, they did. They came, they came at 930, but your doors were closed. Yeah, I'm just saying. He was going to supernaturally, as a matter of fact, some famous influencer was going to come and talk about how good your product was. <laughs> you just got to give him something to work with. And let me give you motivation to do that. The awesome thing about the God we serve is that he doesn't work in additions. He works in multiplications. So he always makes it multiple times more when you offer it. So stop waiting for the perfect gift and give him what you have to work with. I'm tired of people saying, you know, Pastor Russell, when, when I get my millions, I'm going to sow a million dollars into the church. No, you won't even sow 10 off the 100 you got now. No, no God really. needs something to work with now. Speak well of what you have now. Yeah. What did Jesus do when the little boy, the little boy got excited to, to present his lunch? He said, oh, all these people hungry, y'all can have my lunch. And some of the disciples said, what is that? Jesus said, hold on. That's it. Bible says he took it and he raised it up and he blessed it. What does what the blessing mean? He spoke well of. well of it. Stop speaking your stuff small. Yes. You don't have no little business. No, no, no. You have a corporation. Even if it's you and your kids, y'all have a corporation. That's it. You have a divine partnership. And you, who you're in partner with owns it all. Oh, see, no, no that's it. No, that's it. You have to get comfortable and realize that God works in multiplication and there's nothing in, in his eyes that is too small. There's some in the room, and I shared this at 8 o'clock. You don't want to put your name on an envelope with 50 cents in it, but you made $5. That's your tithe. Why are you ashamed to put your name on it? It's a principle to operate. We, we, gotta, we have to get outside of um, the pride and the emotion of things and start participating with the principle so God can do the supernatural. Mm -hmm. When we participate in his financial plan, that's when we authorize him to do the supernatural above mm -hmm. or beyond all we can ask, think, or imagine. But we have to do our part. Is that all right? Come on, last one. Come on, Philippians. Watch this, watch this. One, three through five, right here. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How would you like that every time somebody thought about you, they thank God? No, that's what Paul said. Paul said, every time I think about you, Philippian church, I give thanks to God. Go to the next verse. Watch this, watch this. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. No, I'm excited to pray for you. I get joy just to pray because I know God's about to do something in your life. He's about to do something that's going to set your family up for generations to come. And I'm with joyous expectation and the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous person avails much. Keep going, Pastor Mika. Verse 5. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. He said you've been a partner with me. Drop down to chapter 4, verse 15. As you know, the Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I was brought 
when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. Say, no other church did this. No other church. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I am graciously supplied with the gifts you sent me with the Patphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Last one. If you got this, you got the whole message. My partnership seeds provides uninterrupted access to heaven's storehouse. Let me say it again. My partnership seed provides uninterrupted access to heaven's storehouse. What are you saying, Pastor Russ? Um, as I was praying and studying, the Lord said, tell him this, Russ. He said, if, if God has access to your storehouse, he, you have access to his. Let me say it again. God wants you to know that if he has access to your storehouse, you have access to his. What are you saying, Pastor Russ? Um, when you partner with God through his men and women, um, you gain access to the same abundant supply where they, where they receive from. So what that looks like, I don't know if you guys ever did this, but when I was in college, I will always come home and pick up my toilet paper, paper towels, toothpaste, hair gel, brushes, extra socks, not from Target, not from Walmart, but from my mama house and her pantry. Well, you know, because my, my daddy go to Sam's. Yeah, that's, that's He what won't you miss do. this flat of water. You get your extra juices, you know, and you, walk, you just go in the pantry and you get it. You get it out of their storehouse because they're your parents, they love you, and you go home and you'll be good, right. right? Because that's our parents and we have that access. We have that relationship. Sam. Now, if we have a strained relationship where there hasn't been a whole lot of exchange, you don't really get access to the pantry like you do when things are good. Am I right or am I right? Pastor Mika, Pastor Mika, stay right there, watch this. I remember, I remember we came home from college and um, my bishop, he liked to go to Sam's. Yeah. And he'll buy two of them things of paper towels, two of them of toilet paper, and like four waters. Every time. And so watch this, so I, yeah. I got one of everything <laughs> and put it in my car. And I drove it back to school, to, to my apartment. And um, Pastor Mika had her stuff in her, her, her dorm or whatever. And then I got friends, right? Then my friends came over. Yep. They only need like one or two. Yeah, so <laughs> we got two rolls of paper towels. Yeah. I saw, saw one dude walking to his car. I said, what, what you going to your car? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he got two rolls of paper towels and four rolls of toilet paper. I said, I, I know I had, I had 16. <laughs> I got, he had took 16 from his mama house. <laughs> so he took three from me because I had access to a supply, but he had access to me. And since he had access to me, he had access to who I had access to. No, 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 pass me, no, no. Finish this, talk, talk to him. Tell him. No, I was just saying that's how you get access to the supply, to heaven's supply through your father. When you go to your father's house and you make petition of your father, there's nothing that he will withhold from you. Come on. Especially when you have been doing what he's asked you to do, right? So that's how you have that uninterrupted access. Father, I need this today. Father says, you've been good to me, my baby. You've been faithful to me. You've, you've done the things that I've asked according to the plan. So you've obligated me to do for you because I said, if you give, I'll give, have men give to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. And so as you continuously sow, into, sow naturally into the life of those who sow into you spiritually, you have access, access to, to what the they storehouse. have access to. Let me help somebody, and I'm done. Um, somebody say, well, the preacher, wants your, the preacher don't want your money. No. no, 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 there are some charlatans, there are some crooks who want what you have. But the truth of the matter is, most pastors want you to have who they have. They know, they're less concerned with what as they are with who. And so they want you to partner with them so you can partner with God through them. <sighs> Let me just declare this. And my God, the same God that takes care of me, the same God that provides for me, the same God that favors me, the same God that opens doors for me, the same God that's going to make me a household name is going to make you a household name. The same God that blesses me abundantly is blessing you abundantly. The same God that blesses me with health, 
from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. The same God that makes me sound in mind and allows me to have revelation to make plain the mystery of the gospel, you have access to that same God. Because my partnership, my seed seals my partnership. Okay, I'm out of time. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Let me prove it. God said he wanted a family. He wanted to partner with all of us. And so he said, how can I seal it? He said, I must sow a seed. He sealed that partnership by not sowing just anything. He didn't give just anything. He gave his only. Absolute perfect. Absolute best son. And he said, if you receive the seed of my son, you could be in partnership with me forever. So right where you are right now, I want to give you an opportunity to receive the seed named Jesus so you can receive the harvest called heaven. So bow your head, say this with me. Say, dear Jesus, today I repent of my sin and I ask you to come into my life. I believe you died for me. I believe you got up for me. And today I make you my Lord, my Savior, and my King. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look up here, look up here, look up here. Look up here, look up here. If you just said that and you meant it, you're saved right now. It don't have anything to do with how you feel. It has everything to do with who you received. And there's three things you need to do. Number one, stay in prayer. That means talk to God every day. Number two, stay in fellowship. That means join a good church where they'll love on you and teach you about God, Balcony. And finally and most importantly, number three, stay in the Word. Everything you and I need is found in the Word of God. Come on, lift both hands, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we as a corporate body of believers, we agree as touching for every family, every circumstance, every situation. We say, like Jesus said, the curse is broken and the curse is finished. And so, Lord, whom the Lord has blessed, no man can curse. So by faith, we receive everything you made available to us in your Word, and we receive it all now in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Now shake yourself, shake yourself. Watch it fall off. Listen, maybe there's some people here today in person or some people watching online and you want to make New Church of Faith your church home. You want to join this church. If that's you, listen, if you're watching online, just click the button that says become a partner and our new partners team will reach out to you. If you're here in person, immediately following this service on your way out, our new partners team will be out there um, at the kiosk and they'll show you how to set up your new partners team, your new partners class so you'll know what we believe, you know what we teach. Amen. Really quickly, we're going to do our...